All right, great. It looks like people are still filing in, um, but as they do so, I will introduce myself and Fairy Godboss. So my name is Sam and I work with Fairy Godboss. We're the largest career community for women and our platform supports women throughout their careers with free resources like company reviews, job listings, webinars with various experts, virtual recruiting events, and a community where users can be honest about their triumphs and failures either as themselves or not anonymously. So welcome everyone to our first installment of our discovery series, where we're gonna be taking a look at non-traditional careers for women and talk to experts in those fields. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, I wanna let everybody know that we will be taking questions throughout the webinar. So feel free to leave questions either in the chat or in the Q&A feature, you'll see a bar at the bottom of your screen. You can leave a question as yourself with your username or anonymously. If anything comes up, feel free to leave it throughout. I'll be watching there and I can ask any questions that you may have. Also, we'll be recording the webinar today. So if you miss anything, you have to leave early or you wanna watch it back later, we'll be sending it out in an email follow-up. Should go out tomorrow, so you'll have the recording. You can rewatch it at any time that you choose. So here with me today are Christine and Linda. Christine is one of the co-founders of Influential Women in Manufacturing, which celebrates the wide-ranging, needle-moving accomplishments excuse me, of women in the industry and looks to spark conversations around best practices for building a workforce that will continue to drive the manufacturing industry forward. She'll be moderating today's discussion, so I'll pass it over to her to let her kick things off. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Samantha. We're delighted to be here today. Um, as she mentioned, I'm Christine. My uh, official role is I'm managing editor at Plant Services Magazine, which is a Putman Media publication based outside of Chicago. And as Samantha mentioned, I'm a co-founder of Influential Women in Manufacturing. Um, IWIM, as we call it, is a recognition program that two other women at Putman Media and I launched in late 2017 to, again, recognize outstanding achievements of women who are really driving innovation in manufacturing and industrial production. And I am honored today and delighted to speak again with uh, Linda Freeman of Rockwell Automation. Uh, she is one of our 2018 IWIM honorees. She was part of our inaugural class of Influential Women in Manufacturing, and it has been a delight to work with her in the past year and hear her stories and hear about some of the incredible opportunities that she has had uh, in her career and all of the work that she's doing to encourage interest in manufacturing among women from all backgrounds of all ages. So we're very excited to speak with her today. Um, I'll kick things off. Linda, if you could tell us, you know, a little little bit about yourself, you know, your title and kind of what that means, the nature of your role at Rockwell Automation. Great. Thank you, Christine. Good morning, everyone. Very excited to talk with you this morning about manufacturing. So I work for a company called Rockwell Automation, probably a name you don't know. Um, we've actually been in business over 100 years, and we do automation for manufacturing facilities. So my role is I work in our industry teams, and I focus on a specific industry to make sure that we have the right products needed for the market. And today we're gonna to do the intro to manufacturing. And I think Christine, first we should start off with two myth busters. How about that? That's great. So the first one is there's this stigma about manufacturing that the facilities are dirty and grimy and they're not a lot of fun to work in when actually that is not how manufacturing is today. That's how it was maybe 50 or 70 years ago. But when you go into facilities today, they're very clean, they're very pristine, they're automated, they're beautiful facilities. So if you think about the TV show, how it's made, um, that's manufacturing. And then I'd say the second, the second myth to bust is we see a lot in the media that manufacturing has left the United States when it really hasn't. There are some companies and some types of products that aren't made as here as much, but when you think about um, the soda you drink every day or the bread you buy from the grocery store or the pharmaceutical pills that you might take every morning to help your blood pressure. All those products are still made in the United States and there's lots of manufacturing facilities. So that's why we're so excited to talk to you today to help um, break those two myths and talk about the new and changing fields in manufacturing because it really is a fun and just great place to work. Yeah, thank you so much for bringing up those points, for busting those myths. I actually was um, writing on some, uh, some research this morning, and one of the things that a lot of people, again, overlook, 
last year, in 2018 alone, 264,000 jobs in manufacturing were added in the United States. It was the first year since 1984 that manufacturing as a share of employment in the United States actually increased. These jobs are here and they're good jobs. There was a survey out recently that uh, most people believe that the salary for a mid-level manager in manufacturing was less than $60,000. In reality, it's $118,000. These are good family sustaining jobs in manufacturing. And as Linda mentions, such a wide variety of roles in really high tech facilities. One of our IWIM honorees this year, actually, she developed her own presentation that she gives to schools in the Denver area called Not Your Daddy's Factory, because that's exactly what it is. Uh, you go in and you, you find these outstanding yeah, automation centric, um, really, really clean facilities and what an incredible chance to work with some leading edge technology. Linda, can you tell me a little bit more about, you know, kind of your path? Um, how you got your start in industry, what spurred your interest in the first place? Okay, um, so I went to college for engineering and while I was in college, I did an internship and I did a research internship and, and I, was, I was bored. I sat in office every day and <laughs> it, just, it was not me, it was uh -huh. not me. And so the next summer, I actually took a job with Procter & Gamble and I worked in Kansas City and I made Dawn dishwashing liquid. I'm sure everybody knows Dawn dishwashing liquid. I had grown up using it as a kid, but I had never really looked at the package and thought about what are all the things that goes into making this little container of dishwashing liquid. And so working in that facility was just amazing. I'd see the rail cars come in every day and they'd have the raw ingredients and then we'd follow those to the process room and it was like a big kitchen and they would mix everything together in these big tanks and next thing you know there's Dawn dishwashing liquid. Mm -hmm. But then you had to go to the packaging room and there's these high speed fast flying machines doing bottles, you know, 100 bottles a minute, and then there'd be um, the one machine that would do the wrapper on the bottle, and then there would be the plastic bottle, and then putting it in the bottle, and then putting it into the case, and then putting the case into a pallet, and then the pallet into a truck, and within just a few hours, I watched these raw materials go to a finished product, wow. and that was just so fulfilling and so exciting to be able to say, wow, I helped someone do their dishes today, or I helped someone uh, wash Are. And so that's how I got to my phone that we didn't just see all different types of manufacturing. Point, all, all the different types of manufacturing. I think one of the things that we hear sometimes um, when we talk to uh, workforce development agencies or organizations that work with young people is young people have the impression besides just, you know, the, the dirty, dark factory um, that, again, is such a misperception now, but think that it's just a, a assembly work or that um, if you go into manufacturing, it's going to be one thing, the exact same thing day after day, and that's what you're going to be doing. Can you talk to me about the, the creativity aspect of a career in manufacturing and the different ways that that can play out in a career? I have the perfect prop for that. <laughs> so I'm sure everybody has a water bottle. And have you looked at the water bottle and thought about all the things that go into this? So starting with packaging design, there's a whole field in packaging design for manufacturing that thinks about how's the consumer going to grab the bottle? Like, have you noticed how the bottle has a curved indention? And then how do they get the ribs on the bottle so that when they form the plastic, the bottle stays sturdy and doesn't squish? And then there's the whole packaging design of the label and how do they make the design on the label and put all the information, how do you get the screw top on? So that's one area I would call packaging design. But then when it goes to make the bottle, to make the label, that's when you get into manufacturing and it's all about process optimization, efficiency, reliability, uptime. Um, if you're the type of person that you're always looking at your life, figuring out, okay, I've got 10 errands to run and I wanna do it in the most efficient way. I wanna do the minimal amount of driving. Um, that's a skill that we do a lot in manufacturing. If you have an old car and you're always trying to think, okay, what, what kind of maintenance do I need to do to the car to make sure that I keep my car running? That's equipment uptime in manufacturing. 
Um, and then there's supply and demand. So you go to the grocery store, you have three kids in your family, you and your spouse, and you're thinking about, okay, well, we're going to be at home these many meals, and I'm going to need this many supplies and this many raw materials to make these many meals. That's the same thing in manufacturing. They get requests in for orders, and then there's someone that works in the supply chain side that makes sure they have all the right raw materials and they've got all the right scheduling on the equipment. And so there's lots of different roles that people don't think about that go into manufacturing. I've, I've actually got one friend of mine. Um, she's a military spouse, so she travels with her husband when they get stationed in different places around the country. And she's a data scientist and works for an automotive part manufacturer. So they make parts that go into vehicles. And she does a lot of the data analysis of looking at their supply chain and their efficiency and their quality. And then she works from home and she makes recommendations back to the plant of, hey, maybe you should tweak this or tweak that. So that's one really big growing field in manufacturing is data scientists. And if you think about your car, like I drive a, I have a, a 2017 Chevy Malibu. And I remember in years before, you know, you get your maintenance log and every 5,000 miles, I would go change my oil. Well, I don't have that anymore. Now the car tells me. The car looks at the quality of the oil. It looks at how long I've been driving. Was it a short drive, a fast drive, a long drive? And then it tells me when to change the oil. So if you think about the technology that goes into just that, or even like tire pressure monitoring. Mm -hmm. Remember the days where we had to go around and check the pressure and the tires in our right. car? Well, now our cars tell us, hey, your tire's getting low. Go fix your tire. That's the same shift that's going on in manufacturing. So we've had all this equipment before where the equipment was kind of blind, it just worked. Well, now the equipment's producing information. So if you're interested about this and you wanna learn more about it, I'll give you some words to go Google. So look at Industry 4.0 or Industrial Internet of Things, Smart Manufacturing, um, there's even a conference. Uh, what's the conference, Christine, you guys host? The Smart Industry Conference? Smart industry. It's all, yeah, all about smart manufacturing, about this enhanced uh, analytics side of manufacturing. And we actually have a growing need in North America. There are actually more jobs right now than people that have the skills to do that type of work. And even if you never went to college, don't have a college degree, there's some great online programs, there's online learning, trade schools now are creating trade programs where you can go and get like a six month or two year certification in smart manufacturing. And so we really want to bring the light again to what a great field this is. And with all this changing workforce, we need labor to come work in these fields. You bring up so many interesting points there when we're talking about, you know, smart manufacturing. Think of what's in so many people's homes right now with Nest or smart doorbells, you know, all these smart sensors. This is the same kind of technology that's going into manufacturing. If you're a data geek, I'm, I love data. I love, you know, research. There is a role for you in manufacturing. You, your talents are needed in the manufacturing industry right now. It's about doing things in a smarter way. You know, again, not just kind of wrote doing the same thing you've always done on the same schedule, but again, optimizing. Like Linda says, if, you, if you're interested in how can I do this more efficiently, and a lot of us are, that's kind of part and parcel of a lot of our days, then there are so many creative opportunities in manufacturing to, to pursue that. Um, I would say that another, another thing that's, um, you know, when Linda talks about even a a plastic water bottle, the packaging that goes into that. We think about necessity being the mother of invention, you know? So there's a greater awareness we find now and appreciation of the perspective of beyond um, sort of the, the male perspective of how things can work. You think about ergonomics, you think about mm -hmm. um, things being designed in different ways for different users. It's not a one size fits all approach. and the the perspectives that, that women can bring to manufacturing based on the necessities that they see in daily life. There are so many opportunities to create creative solutions that again, is one that have real impact on your life, on your neighbor's life, in the community and around the world through manufacturing. It's for me as, as an editor and someone covering the field right now, it's a fascinating field to be covering 
quickly evolving and really opportunity rich in the United States. And yeah, so many, so many different paths to go down. Yeah. And I see a lot jumping of- in. Oh, so sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Just for a moment. We had yeah. something from the audience ask if you could repeat the websites you just mentioned before. She oh, sure. if you wanted to get them. Thank you. Yeah. So the terms that I would recommend that you Google. So if you just go into Google and put in industry, 4.0. So the idea of Industry 4.0 is first we had the Industrial Revolution where they had the steam engine and then we had automated manufacturing with like Ford Motor Company creating plants. Then the third industry revolution was like computers and the internet and technology. Well, the fourth industry revolution, Industry 4.0, is this idea about data that our machines produce data and what are we going to do with that data to make us more efficient. Another term for that is called industrial internet of things. So um, Christine mentioned the nest that you have in your home. I I just bought a new garage door opener recently and it's got (laughs) internet and Bluetooth connection and I can have an app on my phone and I can open my garage door from whenever I'm out of town. It's, it's, It's so funny to think how the world is so connected So those connected devices is called internet of things. And then when you put industrial in front of it, that's when we bring in the type of information and machines that's happening in manufacturing. And then another term for that is called smart manufacturing. So actually a great place to look would be if you go to LinkedIn and you look up my company's name, my employer, which is Rockwell Automation, we do webinars and blog posts, and I've actually got one coworker that started this um, fun little YouTube video series called um, a Manufacturing Happy Hour, and he sits down and has, a, and has a beer with somebody who works in manufacturing and then talks about kind of the challenges and the things they're running into. So if you wanted to learn more just about what's going on in manufacturing, and then also going to Putnam um, Media and looking up, they have magazines, There's the journal, there's smart industry, plant services, pharmaceutical manufacturing. So for a lot of different fields in manufacturing, um, they have magazines that you can sign up for and websites and email blogs. And then I wanted to add, Christine, you were talking about just the exciting jobs and, and the thing that I've seen change also in manufacturing is a lot more women are coming to work in manufacturing. And I think it's because women are drawn, we're really drawn to helping others. And we love to solve problems and we want to help the world. And so when you think about manufacturing, it makes baby food, it makes clean water, it makes medicine, it makes cars. Manufacturing enables the world. I I challenge everyone just for the next few days, every time you go to purchase something, just take a second to look at what you're purchasing, maybe flip over on the back, look at the name of the company that makes it when you're at the grocery store, when you're at the pharmacy, when you're at Starbucks, Mm -hmm. just getting your coffee cup at Starbucks and looking at the machines that make the Starbucks coffee or the cup that it goes in, all of that is manufacturing. And there's so many uh, jobs and companies in the United States that don't have a good platform to talk about what they do. And so that's, we're so happy Fairy God Boss had us on today to chat about this. And how powerful, again, to be part of that, to look at something and say, hey, I made that. Whether, you know, for, for how many decades, um, you, we hear about, you know, my, my grandfather who was an engineer who could look at a bridge and say, I helped build that. And now all of the, all of the career opportunities in so many different aspects of the field to be able to say, you know, that you were a part of that. And, and actually your point about, you know, the industrial internet of things and all these connected devices, that's one of the biggest needs right now too, is for cybersecurity. For oh, good point. Secure all these devices. If you have interest in, you know, in cybersecurity, so often the tech roles that are needed, um, roles that need to be filled in manufacturing right now sometimes get overlooked. And we talk to, uh, you know, high schoolers or college kids who they think of high tech and going to tech career and they think of going out to Silicon Valley, going to Google or something. There are so many high tech opportunities in manufacturing beyond data analytics for, yeah, for cybersecurity, for, um, with blockchain, for supply chain transparency. Um, anything that's high tech right now that you think of as high tech, there's a role and an application for that within manufacturing. 
And when we say high tech, we don't mean a four year college engineering degree. Right. It can be the trade schools now, there's online programs. If you're looking to make a career shift, if you're looking for a career change, there are ways to gain skills within a very short period of time to help you move into this field. And then you'll learn more as you're in the field. But as we said, there's more jobs right now than there are people. And so it's very easy to get in. Um, another thing that I like about working in manufacturing is every day we're solving a different kind of problem. And I, I love to solve problems. And so being able to say that I do something to help the world and solve problems, you know, manufacturing kind of brings both of those. Um, it's very fast paced, it's never boring. Um, there's always ways, like another thing that's a really big um, initiative in manufacturing is reducing carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. And so looking at, okay, the plastic that I use to make this bottle and how I process the water, what carbon footprint did making this product leave on the earth? And then when the person's finished consuming that product, what carbon footprint does that leave? And so that's a whole nother growing field, the sustainability of manufacturing and reducing carbon footprint. Um, they're always looking to improve quality or to repair broken equipment. So if you're someone who is always looking at something and saying, oh, well, if they'd have just done this, this, and this, and it could have been a little bit better, right? Um, mm -hmm. then that's a, a natural talent or passion that you could take and then apply to a job in manufacturing. Yeah, go and go be part of it. I would say too, um, as a as an aside for uh, for influential women in manufacturing, if you're if you're interested in the kind of bevy of career options available, and you want to learn more about some of the different roles. We actually just through IWIM we released our 2019 influential women in manufacturing ebook just this week, and it profiles our 27 honorees this year. There are people who there's a woman who started out at Ford as a dishwasher 30 years ago. She rose through the ranks. She went back after being at Ford for several years. She went back and got her bachelor's in engineering, got an advanced degree, and she retired a couple of years ago as VP of prototyping for Ford, which is incredible. It's these kinds of stories. Um, people who, again, who are, who are chief women who are chief technology officers, uh, people who are involved in the data analytics side, people who work with the plant floor and optimizing reliability of machines. So many different so many different interesting options. Um, you can check out that ebook at our website, influentialwomeninmanufacturing.com. Um, there's also information there. Uh, we have access to our ebook from last year. You can read Linda's profile and uh, find out more about um, some of the interviews that we've done with women who are doing incredible things in the field. Um, if you're interested in learning more, I would would definitely direct you there. Uh, Linda, can you tell me just as we, I see we've got just a few more minutes left um, about some specific maybe projects that you're, um, that you're working on right now that excite you, number one. And number two, for someone who is, is maybe listening in and thinking, you know, okay, maybe I will investigate this, um, but I'm not sure where to start. What recommendations would you offer? Okay, great. So I think one of the things I'm working on right now is, is um, the products that um, my employer produces, we're the electronic products that go on the machines and control the machines. And so if we really want manufacturing in the U.S. to be viable for our country, um, to help be good for our economy, then we need to make sure our facilities are running as efficiently as they can and they're making um, good business decisions. Well, to make good business decisions, you need to have more data. And so we have some technologies that we've been selling for many, many years, the garage door opener that just, you know, open and close the door, um, it's an analogy. And so working with our product divisions to now make those devices smart, but there's the whole thought process of, well, okay, I want to make it smart, but what data do I actually need? And so understanding the process flow of manufacturing and what data would be beneficial for that device to produce so that we can then take that data and then make a better decision and, ma and make a better decision. So that's probably one of the, because I've been in manufacturing now for almost 25 years. And so to see this shift in the technology being used and then to see the, the new types of jobs that are being created with this, that, that's probably the most exciting thing for me um, to do. And so you asked for my recommendation of where to start. Um, I think your IWIM recommendation is probably the first place I'd recommend people to go. You can read the bios of all the different women and that can kind of give you an idea 
of the different careers. Um, then the second thing I would recommend is to go to um, LinkedIn or to, I believe we're also on uh, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, um, but look up uh, my employer, Rockwell Automation, and go read some of the blog posts. And then when you go to our website, just rockwellautomation.com, if you look across the top, there's actually a thing that says industries. And you can click on the industries and then it'll drop down all the different types of manufacturing that's around the world, whether it's oil and gas or forest products. Yeah. I mean, think about the house you live in. Somebody yeah. has to make the timbers and the tile and the right. floors and the curtains. And so there's consumer products and food and beverage. Um, and then depending on where you are in life, um, if you're looking to get completely new education, um, then I would look toward your local um, trade schools, community colleges, ask them what kind of programs they have on smart manufacturing. Or if you want to do remote learning, um, LinkedIn actually has some great series that you can um, do on LinkedIn. Or I listened yesterday to the Fairy God Boss webinar on relaunching your career. And um, this presenter yesterday talked about all the different online programs, like Harvard has an online program, a free online program. There's these MOOCs and I apologize, I don't remember all the acronyms she said yesterday, but go listen to the, the webinar from yesterday, all her recommendations of the online programs. Because again, there's, there's more jobs than there are people with the skills. You can gain the skills through online learning. There's lots of free resources for online learning. Or if you want to go in and get a degree in the area of reliability, quality, packaging design, optimization, supply chain, um, look at local trade schools or universities. Yeah, I would say too that um, if you think about some of the top employers maybe in your area, if you know some of the big names, I'm thinking especially of some you know big name pharmaceutical companies, they are really taking the lead on relaunch programs. So you know if you um, had a career and you you know left the workforce for a little while for caregiving responsibilities or another issue and you're looking to get back in, I would say maybe even you know check out those websites of the top some top employers in your area and you might find information um, about kind of the relaunching programs that they offer or their partnerships with local schools that they can direct you to as well. I want to make sure um, we had one other question come in. Um, Linda, you had mentioned about remote opportunities, about the woman who was working remotely, you know, on optimization. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how remote opportunities are evolving? Um, because we do often think of manufacturing as factory jobs where you're on shift, on site every day. Mm -hmm. So the world of software tools, um, just like having internet and just this Zoom technology today, being able to ha you know see our faces and hear our voices and project this over the internet, um, those tools in the work environment have also changed. So if I look at my job, how I did my job 10 years ago versus how I do my job today, a lot of my job is on conference calls, on webinars, I'm working in spreadsheets, I'm doing analysis reports, I'm emailing those off. And so that's how the world of manufacturing has changed because our tools have changed that we can use in the workplace, mm -hmm. but then also the jobs so um, Christine talked about, it's not the manual assembly anymore. You know, manufacturing is not Laverne and Shirley and, right. and you're, you know, you're on the line and doing the beer bottles. The machinery does that today. And what the jobs in manufacturing are is keeping the machines happy, keeping them healthy, keeping yep. them up and running, mm -hmm. and then figuring out how to get the most productivity and efficiency out of that machine. And usually that's sitting in an office doing some kind of analysis. There might be some work where you go on the plant floor and do some investigatory or collect data, but like that friend of mine that works remote, she's just the person that does all the analytic processing and somebody else sends her the data from the plant floor. Right, it's not about fixing it when it's broken. You know, as we think about taking care of ourselves from healthcare perspective too, it's about preventing problems from happening in the first place. And there are still those jobs. There are still technician jobs, yeah. people that do work on the plant floor that are hands-on with the machinery. Um, but Christine and I felt that everybody kind of knows about those jobs. So we wanted to talk more about the new opportunities that are growing in manufacturing. And one way to learn also what's in your local vicinity, I recommend you call your local chamber of commerce. The chamber of commerce is gonna know who the manufacturing employers are in your local area. 
Or like I said, when you go to the grocery store, flip over the label and look at the back of the label, see who the company is, go to their website, and then start looking through all the different types of jobs. There's so many uh, different variabilities of things that can be done today versus just even two, three years ago. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much. That was a really great conversation. For everybody watching, if you're interested in learning more about manufacturing or have any unanswered questions, the wonderful women of Influential Women in Manufacturing are starting a Fairy God Boss group. It'll be launching in the coming months, so stay on the lookout. And if you want to make sure that you're on their list to join it, you can email me directly. I'll include my email address in a follow-up email, and I'll make sure that you're on their list. So thank you again, Christine and Linda, and thank you to everybody who joined us today. This was awesome. Have a Thank great you. rest of your day. Bye. Bye.